Hello Louisiana Beer Reviews, another duo review. We're doing Yingling Bach Beer. Not seen in Louisiana, but this was sent to me from Pennsylvania. Wayne sent it. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. Alrighty. So let me, let me take a, a, a moment here to look at the can. Uh, it's kind of got the, uh, kind of like that Schoenbach appeal to it. You know, where there's a ram on it. Like that ram. It says it specifically says it's a German style. From the oldest brewery in America, Yingling. Um, let's see. It's listed alcohol per volume anywhere? No. I don't see it. They don't put it on their cans. I think it's six. Okay. And the date on this is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me see if I can decipher it. <coughs> Yeah, it's got this crazy code. Some crazy code just means something to them. Right. All right, so the can is got a, an exciting beige color. It looks a little bit like the Michelob Bach Amber Bach can. A little bit, you know, with the same kind of theme. I thought Michelob Bach came in a dark label. Amber Bach does. Right? And only Dornox has it these days. That's because it's sweet. Yeah, they were saying on the Yingling website the only place in the South that this is sold is at their tap room in Tampa, Florida. On draft. Huh. Okay. So what would you surmise would be the alcohol content on this? Because Yingling beers are not overly alcohol. Well, yeah, like I was saying, I think it's six. I think I remember looking on their website and they were saying it was six. Six? I think so. All right, cheers. It's dark. It is dark. So the only thing that we would get around is uh, during in our local small brewery, which is kind of like not small anymore. It's a beta. People see a beta everywhere. Is that once a year they'll put out what's called a Mardi Gras Bach. Oh yeah. And uh, Mardi Gras Bach comes in at six and a half percent alcohol, and it's available for three months out of the year. They have four beers that they do that with. They'll do it with a Christmas sale. And sometimes they release two at the same time. They call it office party or something. I don't know. Sometimes they. They come across with some really good beers that they bring back and they just come up with some kind of these weird, kind of awful concoctions. I saw their blueberry wheat today. They brought that back. The blueberry light? The blueberry wheat beer. Yeah, it's light. Yeah, they dedicated it to another YouTube channel, a local personality that does red beans and rice reviews. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, they they only bring that blueberry beer out every few years. Maybe if they get a good deal on blueberries or something. <clears throat> it's not even blueberry season yet. No? Blueberry season is like in a couple of months. Yeah, maybe they got them freeze dried. <laughs> Probably so. I didn't buy it, I just saw it. Yeah, it smells like dark roasted barley malt, like brown bread. Kind of caramel candy-ish. Oh, is that not supposed to taste it? No. All right, no. taste. Cheers. Cheers. Kind of tastes like a sweet, mellowed out donkle. Yeah. Well, it's not as potent. Got a little roastiness on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can tell it's got the toasted grains going on with it. Got a little molasses. Yeah, um, I guess that's the sweetest I'm tasting. Still medium bodied. Would it be a strap finish. back molasses? Be a black strap? Yeah. Black strap molasses? Uh, it might be. We used I to have some over there. We used to get that Burr Rabbit black strap molasses. I, I have some. I picked it up. I was like, oh, let me try this. Um, so explain to everybody what the black strap molasses is since they don't understand which. It's just like the really, ooh, it's like the really ooh, dark movie called for using those terminologies, black strap. It is 100% true, it's what it's called, and it's uh, remnants of what happens to sugar cane after it's produced. Yeah, and it's the very darkest one you can get. Right, it's after they burn the cane. Um, the sweetness on this beer, actually, when you taste it, is not that sweet. I'm going to say two and a half out of five sugar cubes. It's not like a super sweet beer. I'm going to call mine three and a half. 
Oh no, I'm sensitive to sweetness. He loves it. I'll, every now and then I'll do some of those flavored beers, mixed those. Those, those concoctions I call them. You ever notice if I put on alcohol eggs, I'll say I don't say brewed in Florida. I'll say like concocted in Florida. Um, this is not concoct. This is a true beer. Yeah, it is. It really is. And you can taste everything that, that makes a beer a beer, a yeast, a barley malt. The bitterness is low, so mm -hmm. I would say one and a half out of five hop cones. So it's malty, heavy, and bitterness low. If you're a hop head, you would not be buying this beer because you would hate it. <laughs> yeah. If you like brown bread, buy it. Tampa Bay Brewery, that was a Schlitz brewery. It was huge. And then they sold it and Yingling bought it. And I would assume they renovated it and made it more up to date. That was probably the, the best acquisition they had made by the old breweries. Yeah, because their brewery in Pennsylvania couldn't keep up with demand. Yeah, I mean, they needed a second big brewery, so now they have that one in Tampa, Florida. Is the one in Tampa bigger than the original brewery? I think it is, because I think that Schlitz Brewery was huge. And the yeah. one in Memphis was huge, and now that's City Brewing, which is funny because now City Brewing makes Schlitz, so <laughs> it's kind of like back home. Um, we'll have to do a duo one day of that new Paps and the new Schlitz. I say new because they got a new contractor, and it tastes to me like they've changed them a little bit, tweaked them a little bit. So when they change these old styles, do you believe they change them for the better or you, th or you think they do marketing studies and find out what their customer base likes and then they do it based I, off of customer base? I really don't know. Because uh, I believe all throughout time that that's been done. That there are marketing research teams that get together and they find out what their customer base likes, they, they do trends, they find out where the market's going in certain directions. Well, that might be why they brought back the Jim Beam original rye and maybe they're getting rid of this pre-prohibition one. Maybe they did research and the customers were like, yeah, it's pretty good, but I really like that other one y'all used to make. And they were like, man, let's just bring the old one back. <laughs> I don't think that's necessarily true. I said, that could be what happened. You just asked me, do you think they do that kind of stuff? And oh, said, yeah. Okay, well, if you think so, okay. Well, what do you think it is? They just woke up one day and said, Let's just change the rye for no reason. I don't know why we're talking about whiskey. We're doing a beer. Well, I mean, I'm just using that as an example. You know, it could be the same That's for macaroni and cheese. Example. You know, it could now be. Now we're going macaroni and cheese. Yeah, Kraft says we can start talking about mixed those and we do beers. Really? Kraft said we use real cheese and real coloring. You know how they always sit on their packages. Yeah. Our macaroni and cheese is real. Right. Not that I ever eat it. I'm just saying that's what they say. So getting back to, to the point that I was trying to say when it comes to marketing research, I think you know, these companies make money. They look to see how they can make money, how they can sell more product. They're constantly looking to see how they can make their products more cost effective on their end and better product coming out. And I think that's what's happening with some of these older brands coming out or coming back, as Jay said, Slits is made a roundabout back home. Uh, who really knows? Who's the wiser? You know, the generation that was drinking Schlitz back then is, you know, hence retired into the graveyards. So, well, I know Mathern's got twelve packs of Schlitz, and they sell them. You know, and you you know they're selling them because they're always fresh. Like you know, they have really good. Are they still? Are they still nine ninety nine? They're eleven ninety nine now <laughs> for the twelve pack. It used to be for a long time they were nine ninety nine, but I remember. But back check, in 2011, my, uh, my, my distro area and see how much they're selling them for. I remember back in 2011, Matherns had a super sale on Schlitz pint cans, mm -hmm. the six packs. They had like huge, what you know, those are called studs. Mean, talls. Yeah, the pint talls. cans. You know, those big stacks they put in the middle of called a stud stack, those displays. Mm -hmm. Huge display. And it was $2.99 for a six pack. And I was just buying it, you know. Of course you were. And everybody was. People were going in there buying it. I said, man, what a deal. 
And I was asking their manager, how'd you get a deal like that? He would, would, didn't really want to tell me. He was like, oh, well, you know, get those kind of deals. It's probably close to date. I don't think they were. It just, something happened, huh? Bro, I don't know. Truck but, broke down. But whatever the Got case, hot. that was a good, that was a great deal, but, uh, <coughs> what's supposed to be in the area? The, the 11 12 packs do move steady, you know, but, uh, whether well, bottles will come back, I don't know, but we're getting off track. So, uh, this is a good one. Uh, Wayne, he does a lot of interesting local beers. Like he's still doing beers with Schaefer, doing videos with Schaefer beer, which we certainly cannot get anymore. No, I did notice he did a Schaefer the other day and I was like, oh, remember that. You so get, you spent like a suitcase and stuff for like eight bucks. Yeah, seven ninety eight. Seven ninety eight at D Del Champs, <laughs> and they called those suitcases the Weekender. What does that imply? The Weekender. Guess you buy for the weekend. You stay drunk the whole weekend. No, you friends regret, will come over. Regret going back to work. Friends Ooh. come over. You drink two on Saturday. Drink, drink two cans on Sunday, and all your friends drink two each. Like the old Schaefer tagline, Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. I like parade beer. You go get high life. The one beer to have when you're having more than one. All right, uh, but back to this. This is a great beer. I think they did a great job with it. They should have gone nationwide, but I guess they do limited on purpose. Like you say, market research to create a mystique. Yep. Just like with that. How would you score it? I don't remember what you scored last time. <laughs> no, I really wasn't thinking about that, but I did I did score. I know I scored it high. I just can't remember the number. I never can remember. Yeah. I'm going to say about 93, like the last beer we did. It's most excellent. I like it. I would drink a six-pack. Not in one day, obviously, but I would drink a six-pack. I'm going to give it... Uh, I'm gonna give it a 92. Um, it's a, it's a, to me, it's, it's a little heavy and sweet. You were giving it two, I gave it like three and a half. So I'm, I'm detecting a heavier sweetness on this. Uh, overall, it's a good beer. Uh, I like, I like the way everything marries together in it. The exception, I find it just a little, it's just a tad sweet. Uh, so to me, it, it kind of, it's got a sugar, sugar note to it a little bit, which I'm finding will be a little. Off. But other than that, I'll give it a 92. Okay, thanks for watching. Lazy Lay Bon Ton Relay, and we're going to end this review by saying you go to Pennsylvania or Tampa, Florida, and take a Yingling. Where's the cave? Take a Yingling Brewery Tour. Yeah. Okay. Take a Yingling Brewery Tour. Check this one out. If you see it, pick it up. It's, it's worth buying, trying. It's a good beer.